We want to determine uh, the point on a plane. We have a plane and we want to determine the point on the plane that is closest to another point. So it goes like this. Uh, in this problem we need to determine the point on the plane Uh, we have 4x minus 2y plus z equals 1 that is the closest to the point uh, negative 2, negative 1 and 5 so how are we going to approach uh, this problem well, we need to d define the, s the distance between uh, one fun between uh, a point x, y, z to a point negative two, negative one, and five, right? So, <clears throat> so the distance from a point x, y, z to the point. negative 2, negative 1, and 5 is given by the distance formula so d equals the square root and we have x plus 2 you said x minus negative 2 so it's x plus 2 squared uh, plus y minus negative 1 or y plus 1 squared uh, plus z minus 5 squared all these are uh, the radicands so and of course uh, it will be a little bit easier to go ahead and and, uh, and squared everything and work with d squared instead of this one but what do we do with this uh, uh, xyz because uh, we, this is a generic point but we want to look at a point uh, 4 a that is on the plane 4x minus 2y plus z equals 1 so what do we do with that well we can write the equation uh, we can solve for z and say uh, rewrite the plane uh, 4x minus 2y plus z equals 1 is the function z equals 1 minus 4x plus 2y okay and now uh, when we plug it in in d we have D and I'll do I'll reply uh, reply replacing D and square so we have D squared to get rid of the of the radical and so we'll have X plus 2 that doesn't change so X plus 2 squared plus uh, Y plus 1 squared but what changes is z. z will be replaced with the quantity uh, 1 minus 4x plus 2y and then we have minus 5 squared okay and I broke my nail darn it it's so uh, what do we have here we simplify to have something like this So we have negative 4, negative 4x, and positive 2y, and we square the whole thing. Okay. And we have a function now. So we're going to say that uh, this equals to some function in x and y. So this will be f of x, y. So uh, now we need to find critical point, right? critical point uh, will be uh, grad 
of f gradient of f of x y equals zero. So, <clears throat> well, come to think about it, I, I should have included. Uh, there was one more step to go. So, what is the derivative uh, with respect to x of this one? If this is f of x. So, what do we have? We have two times x plus 2 okay this goes to 0 and this will be uh, 2 but we have also the inner function too so the uh, derivative of negative 4x is negative 4 so we have negative 4 times negative 4 minus 4x plus 2y right so let's see what do we have here how many what the the, the number of uh, x component y component in this thing uh, we have 2x and here we have negative 8 uh, negative 32 so no it would be negative times negative positive 32 plus 2 so we have 34x what about the y? Uh, all we have is negative 8 times uh, times 2, so negative 16y. What about the three, the three uh, numbers? 4 here, and we have negative 8 times negative 4, so 4 and 32 is 36, plus 36. Okay, what do we need to find here? We need to make it equal to 0, isn't it? To find critical number. Good. All right, let's find the derivative with respect to y. In the so what we're looking we're looking at this one. So this goes to zero. We'll have two times this quantity. And here we have 2 times 2, so we have plus 2 times 2, and we have negative 4 minus 4x plus 2y. So we have, in terms of x, we have 4 times negative 4, we have negative 16x. In terms of y, we have 2, and we have 2 times 2 times 2, so we have 8, total of 10. Y. And the three numbers, we have 2 here, and we have 2 times 2 times negative 4. So we have 2 minus 16, we have negative 14. And we need that to equal 0. So what do you think? Between these two equations, can we solve for x and y? Huh? We could. I'm sorry? Yeah. So solve. For x and y. So we have, uh, so we have an equation here. So we solve it, and uh, we can divide everything by two. I think so. We have 17x minus 8y equals negative 18, and we have here we have negative 8x plus 5y equals positive 7. Uh, how, what would be the easiest way to solve it? Multiply this by 5, multiply this by 8, right? And we have, uh, what is here, 85x minus 40y equals negative 90, and negative 64x plus 40y equals 56. Twenty one x zero here, negative uh, thirty four. Is it? A? 
All right, so this is x. Uh, what about y? We can plug it on any of this equation, um, either the first or the second. I'll do it in the first equation. So uh, plug in the second equation. And you get negative 16 times 30, negative 34 over 21 plus 10x, 10y equals 14. Should have reduced it by two, so uh, reduce it by two. So we have eight times thirty-four over twenty-one. Eight plus five y equals seven. So hmm, eight times thirty-five y equals 7 times 21 is 147 minus, what is 8 times 34? 8 times 30 is 240, 240 and 32, 272 divide by uh, 21 and the difference here is 125, isn't it? Negative 125 And therefore, y equals negative 125 divided by 5 times 21, or 105. Now, this can be reduced a little bit, isn't it? Did I get it right, by the way? Or did I screw up? Divide by 5 is negative 25. Divide by 5 is negative 25 or 21. I think that's, that will be the case. OK? So y equals negative 25 by over 21, and x equals negative 34 over 21. Here's the problem. The bummer is, so what, what did you learn? We have a critical point, right? Now, every critical point is necessarily a, a maximum or minimum. Well, the answer is no. But if we have a maximum or minimum, then it will be a critical point, right? Plus. What else? Uh, perhaps we also have an issue of absolute. I mean, we are looking at the distance. So we are not looking at uh, minimizing d. We want to make sure that there is no uh, other. So I don't know. I'm trying to think. Do, do we have this this particular function has some boundaries? It's a plane. Uh, are we talking about boundaries? Let me check my notes. No, we don't have boundaries. But how do we know, first of all, you, well, let's, say, let's assume this is extreme. Uh, uh, this is an extreme. How do we know to find maximum or minimum? Remember, in calculus one, it involved the second derivative test. Well, it turned out it's also in, in calculus three. So now let's talk about the second derivative test for, for this particular case. Okay, so I'll stop the problem right here, and I'll now I'll pause and go on and talk about the second derivative test to distinguish between uh, maximum or minimum. And going back to what we said at the beginning of the class, where at times we have what we call a saddle point. If you go uh, on, if we, if you take that uh, surface, or the function in 3D, and you uh, you do a cross section on the a on the z x plane. Well, you have a minimum. If you do it on the z y plane, you have a maximum, and therefore we have a saddle point. Again, those of you who walked in late didn't see this particular graph on the maple, but I'll get back to it later on. 